so good evening guys welcome back to the new lecture uh, today we'll be doing the variance and standard deviation part uh, last lecture i hope you know we completed the mean median mode right and the mean deviation now it's time for variance and standard deviation correct so i would think this is the last part so today we'll be ending mostly i think or half a lecture more we'll need for this so i hope we'll do this today and we'll be completing our 11th standard portion correct and after this i think after today is friday so from monday or from tuesday i think we'll be starting a revision of the previous chapters which we have not covered correct so let's get started uh, i hope my voice and everything is clear guys is it clear give me a thumbs up yes guys come on gayatri ganesh thank you gayatri chalo let's get started so variance and standard deviation let's see variance now you see there is not much difference in variance and standard deviation correct a standard deviation is just square root of variance right guys so we need to study variance now what is variance let's see the mean of the squares of the deviations of the variates from their arithmetic mean is called variance now this might sound very confusing but let's break it into part so first we need to find mean then we need to find their deviations from the mean that means we have to subtract them and when we square them and add all of them we'll get variance so it's better understood with example so let's look at what we have next it is denoted by sigma square you must know this notation guys sigma square correct so the positive square root of variance is called standard deviation as we all know if we took a square root of a real number we'll get two values plus and minus so its positive value is the standard deviation so there is not much difference just a square root ka difference correct right, guys chalo so if variance is sigma square then standard deviation will be sigma right let's see what we have next variance and standard deviation for ungrouped data again now guys for variance and standard deviation we will be dividing into three parts grouped ungrouped data frequency distribution and group frequency distribution correct so we'll see how to get variance in all of these now we have some methods which we can use for better understanding or you can say shortcut methods uh, we'll see as we proceed and also while we are here don't forget guys uh, saturday and sunday tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we'll be doing pyqs j means correct so what i'm trying to say is ki don't forget to attend tomorrow's lecture tomorrow we'll do conic section and the day after tomorrow one lecture we'll be doing statistics right you can expect one question on statistics in je mains let's see next so for ungrouped data as we all know guys in case of ungrouped data let x1 x2 x3 be the n observations and x bar be their mean now what we have to do we have to find their deviations from there that means we have to find x1 minus x bar x2 minus x bar and so on so x bar is the mean which is sum of all observations upon total number of observations variance variance ka formula as you can see when we find their deviations we have to square them so this is xi minus x bar the whole square when we find the deviations we have to square them and after squaring them when we add all of them and divided by the number of observations n then we'll get then we'll get then we'll get the variance i hope i am pretty clear correct next standard deviation standard deviation is just the root of variance correct as you can see so let's see how to find the variance and standard deviation of this data come on guys uh first 
I want you all to calculate the mean of this data. Come on, grab your pen and notebook and fast calculate the mean. And you can write it in the chat box. Who all are there right now? Okay. So everyone will do it. As a two new have joined, okay. Rajat. Chalo, beta. Find the mean. Mean is finding very simple. Come on. You can write it in the chat box. Kaya three left. Okay. Ganesh and Mido. Come on, guys. Find the mean. You can write it in the chat box if you got it. Hello, nine. Okay. So the mean is nine. Superb. Now, once we get the mean, which is 72 by 8, which is nine, what we have to do? We have to find the deviations from the mean. So for six, if I say, Rajat has left. What happened, guys? Deviation. 6 minus 9. Uh, just a second, guys. I'll write it somewhere else. Yeah. So what will be the deviation? I'll write it here. 6 minus 9. Ka mod. That is 3. Similarly, for 7, it will be 7 minus 9. Ka mod. That is 2. Right? So for all of them, we'll find the deviations. So if we find the deviations for all of them, then after that, we have to square them. Suppose I got 3. I'll square it. I'll get 9. Then I'll get 2. So I'll square it. I'll get 4. Correct? After getting all of them, we have to add them. Correct? So obviously, guys, here the calculations are very simple because the numbers are small. So fatafat, I will want you all to do this process and give me the answer. What process did I just say? I said get the deviations, square them and add them. So I have done for two. And if I add these two, I'll get 30. You have to do for all of them and add them and tell me the final value. Come on. Ganesh, I am expecting answer from you this time. And Mido has already answered. Come on, guys. Let's see. Ooh. Chalo, fada fad. How much time do you want? This is overall calculation, guys. No need to, you know. Chalo, fada fad. Ganesh, I hope you all are doing. Achha. I'll keep quiet for two minutes <laughs> so you can calculate in peace. Mm, first are calculator 13. Mm, I'm also doing mental maths. Just a practice. Three, nine, three, four, sixteen. What did you get? I think I got it. I think I got 74. I calculated mentally and I hope I am correct. 74, right? Thank you, Mido. Chalo. So I got 74, right? So same thing they have calculated here. They got 74, correct? Now to find the variance, we have to divide 74 by the number of observations. How many number of observations were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. So if I divide 74 by 8, right? What I'll get? 9.25, this is my variance. Got it? So simple guys, very simple calculation and such questions are asked in JE mains also. Uh, we'll do this. 
when on sunday right previous year we'll do this don't forget to attend that lecture come on so i hope ungrouped data is fine standard deviation will be root so square root of 9.25 will be 3.1 something right 3.04 chalo now variance and standard deviation for group data you know that in group data we have two types correct what are the two types first is discrete and second is we have groups groups means the classes events correct so let's look at them oh, let me get my pointer yeah chalo so discrete frequency distribution first type so let first a uh, discrete frequency distribution is basically making a table so the table will look like this where here will be x1 here will be f1 this will be the question given to you correct x1 means the observation then f1 means the number of times that observations have occurred so x2 have occurred f2 times and so on i hope you know the variance and standard deviation will be calculated see the concept remains the same guys what we have to do we have to first find the mean take the sum of the squares of their difference matlab kya karna hai every observation subtracted from mean square it and then add it correct but here since x1 sorry just a second yeah x1 is occurring f1 times so we have to just multiply by f1 in the ungrouped part we saw that every observation was occurring one one times so even if we multiply by one it will not make any difference here x1 is occurring f1 times so we have to multiply that with f1 so finally the formula that we'll get is this see only this f1 part is new as i told you in the ungrouped data every observation was occurring one time so even if we multiply it with one it doesn't make any difference but here since every every observations is occurring multiple number of times we have to multiply them with their respective frequencies so here we multiply with fi rest of the formula remains the same what is n capital n is the sum of all the i mean the number of observations and what are the number of observations sum of all frequencies correct so standard deviation will be the root of variance now let's see how we can form the table uh please remember the values of xi and fi were given in the question values of xi and fi were given in the question so the table will be xi fi so xi and fi values will be given now we have to find the difference sorry mean so after finding mean fi xi i hope you know the formula of mean mean is summation fi xi upon summation fi let me write it here mean x bar is summation f i x i sum of all observations upon total number of observations now you have to find this and lastly we have to find f i into this square right so by taking this table we can easily get them here all of them after adding we'll get summation this part after getting this here we'll get n which is summation f i we have to divide it by n correct so let's see some examples x bar as we all know the mean continuous frequency distribution now in continuous frequency distribution what do we have guys we have classes that means we have range of values of x so the given continuous frequency will be this we already did if you want to read it one time read it and then i'll explain it so i'm giving you just 10 15 seconds to read it and then i'll explain it. we have already done this guys chalo i also read it with you what it what is it saying guys is ki the continuous frequency distribution has groups 
let's say i have groups 10 to 20 then i have 20 to 30 then i left 30 to 40. now in this group how to select xi how to select xi so to select xi we take the middle point of this group so in 10 to 20 the midpoint is 50 20 to 30 the midpoint is 25 and 35. so the only difference is getting the midpoints once you'll get the midpoint the calculation remains the same as in the previous table only thing is to get the midpoint <clears throat> right Chalo. let's see okay we got the midpoint variance will be the same right see guys the formula remains the same no changes okay 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 we can form the following given table now here only one column will be extra right guys which column the midpoint one rest all the columns will remain the same so let's see how the column will look there will be the class interval here is the frequency here this column will be the extra one this column will be the extra one rest all will be the same fi xi then xi minus x bar and fi xi minus x bar the whole square correct Vinesh, are you following me though give me a thumbs up if it's clear okay thank you so much guys let's see analysis of frequency distribution this is a very interesting thing let's see what we have here mm, just a second i now see uh, like this data that we have mm, let's say let's take an example uh, i'll explain it to you very clearly suppose let's take our example only uh, in your school you have given the aiet test correct so um, let's say you gave aiet 1 uh, in suppose october and you gave aiet 2 in november now let's assume that the same number of students which gave aiet 1 gave aiet 2 right now aiet 1 will give some marks of the students that means will give some data of the marks aiet 2 will give us some data of the marks now when analyzing one data we can find out its Variance, standard deviation, mean, etc., etc., etc. When analyzing second data, we can again find out variance, mean, standard deviation, and all. Now, if suppose we want to check ourselves or check like how the marks have scored, how we have scored the marks in one and two, or how the students have scored the marks in one and two. So that is the job for us teachers. We have to analyze that. If we want to compare the average that the suppose say let's say ki AIT 2 may students have scored far better than AIT 1. But how to compare that? Right? So there is a mean, uh, mean means there is a tool you can say by which we can compare these two data. Comparing data. So comparing data is what we get by this coefficient of variation which is what we are doing of analysis in of frequency distribution we have two datas of the marks we want to analyze these datas among themselves like compare first data with second data similarly we can have n number of data right till now you have been given eight aiets so we have eight aiets ke marks now we have to compare the marks of every ait so obviously guys we cannot check manually we require some tool so that tool is coefficient of variation which is uh, denoted as c dot mean 
so coefficient of variation enables us to compare two data or more data that means how the data is like let's say suppose in one of the data the data is more scattered second the data is more concentrated so how to compare them that is given by coefficient of variation so and the formula is sigma sigma is standard deviation upon mean into 100 now we must have all guessed it into 100 ka matlab kya hota hai it's in percentage you can say all something like that correct sorry yeah i hope i am making sense guys everyone mido ganesh someone else have joined yes or no give me a thumbs up am i making sense thank you mido Chal. so for comparing variability or dispersion of two series right what are we comparing the dispersion because we are studying obviously the chapter's name is measures of dispersion so we are comparing the dispersion of the two data right or two series you can say okay two or more series anything we calculate the coefficient of variation of each series now what is the result the result is the series having greater coefficient of variation that means cv is said to be more variable more variable means it is more spread out the data is more scattered right the series having lesser is said to be more consistent obviously guys if the data is not more scattered everywhere else it is concentrated that means it is very 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 consistent and our aim is to get consistency right if we calculate or if we uh, compare the marks of AIT1, AIT2, what should the teacher's aim be? That the students are consistently improving, right? So the data should not be scattered. Ki haan, suppose art AIT is yeah, here, suppose let's for max, one of the AIT, one you got 90 marks, in another one you got 80 marks, in another one you got 10 marks, in another one you got 2 marks. <laughs> Right, so it should not be such scattered. It should be concentrated or somewhere it should be consistent. Ki haan, AIT one may I got sixty, AIT two may I got sixty two, AIT three may I got sixty eight, AIT four may I got sixty five. Dhere 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 to improve it. So it is better to be more consistent, right? And how to get more consistent of the two data? We have to compare coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation should be less for the data to be more concentrated or for us to be more consistent. Oh, right. Chalo. Now we'll do some questions. Uh, we have done some questions on various, only one question we did for ungrouped data. We are left, we'll see two more questions for group data and for group data, right? For uh, discrete frequency and the continuous frequency. Let's see. Now I hope you are ready with your mental calculations. <laughs> Correct? Chal. Find the mean variation and standard deviation of the following data. Okay, I think we can skip it because it is ungrouped. We already found it or should we do it? What do you say, guys? Mean, we'll see the process. Uh, I... Okay, let's see, let's calculate it. No worries. So what time is it? We have more 20 minutes left. So yeah, guys, chalo. Thoda look fast calculation of Nagarja so we can improve our speeds. What is the mean, guys? What do you got? Write it in the chat box. What mean do you got? Come on, this to you can calculate it. 12 plus 5, 17, 20, 38, 40, 50, 58, 64 are right? 64 by 8. Yes, it is 8. See? Chalo, abhi sabke deviations nikal then. So the deviations will be this. 
if we square them and divide by 8, we'll get the variance, which looks like 24.25. And if we want to get standard deviation, it'll be around 4.9, right? Because phi ka square is 25. So 4.9 something a square will be close to 24.25. Let's see now our interest. Find the mean variance. Attempt this. Come on. Who have joined just now? Let me see. Kartikeya. Okay. Kartikeya, I hope you will give me the answer of this. So yeah, this is the data. This is a discrete frequency. What we have to do, guys? See, for one of them, I'll show you. Oh, sorry. First, get the mean. I'll help you out. Oh, I'll write it here. What is the mean? Mean is summation f i x i upon summation f i upon the summation upper yeah. So first we have to find yeah this table x i four eight and all f i. Now we have to find x i into f i summation f i to find earlier xi into fi chalo pehla kya aega? let's fill it 12 second 40 third 99 finish please you can use switch off the camera you are in the lecture right still not giving some answers Hello, Ganesh. Ganesh, are you there? Hmm. Thank you, Ganesh. Please, I can see you are walking around the class so please take a book and pen and sit and attend the lecture it's my request thank you yeah guys you can calculate the others now i want ganesh to answer Come on, Ganesh. Calculate all FIX and add them. 17 FIX are 85, 80, 24 3 are 72, 32. Add them, Ganesh. Add all the FIs and give me the answer. What should I write here? Hello, Ganesh. Are you there? Time to answer, beta. Hello, Ganesh. Are you there? Give me the answer. Hello. Hello, Ganesh. Are you there in the meeting? Yeah. Anyone else? 
So, Mido, what do you think? It's 420. It's 420. Correct. Now, next we have to find mean. What is mean? Summation fi xi upon summation fi. That means 420 upon 30. So, okay. Thank you, Mido. 420 upon 30, we'll get the mean. So, let's get the mean here. 420 upon 30. Fourteen, correct. The mean is fourteen. Now we are calculating x i square. F i x i square. Here, let me tell you why we are doing this. This is a better method to calculate variance. Uh, generally, what we do, we calculate the difference and then square them from mean. But this is the direct method. You see what we are doing. The formula has been changed. The formula has now become, let me write it here, just a second, we'll see it, okay, yeah. For ease of calculations, so fi xi square, so, such heavy calculations, right? Now, the variance, mean we calculated 14, variance, see this formula. This formula is just the replication of the formula that we know. What does the formula say? Summation fi xi square minus x bar ka square. What is x bar? It is mean. You can calculate by using either of the formula. I am introducing this formula here because we will be using it in the chapter called probability distribution. Obviously, guys, it's uh, in 12th standard probability distribution, but I'm introducing the formula here. I hope you can remember. Obviously, I'm not telling you to remember the formula. We already have that formula once, but you can use this formula also. Right? This formula is much simpler because we don't have to subtract and then square and all, multiply and all. We just have to do this. Correct? So, uh, here will be 7 to 5, 8 upon 30 minus 14 square. So what do we got here? 45.8 is the variance. So the standard deviation will be something around 8.8, 8.9, sorry, 6.8, 6.9, because 7 square is 49, 49 say come, right? So find the mean variance, standard deviation, shortcut method of the following data. Now, this shortcut method is the same that we discussed in using mean deviation. What is the shortcut method? Here we use the assumed mean method. Now, those of you who forget, obviously, uh, let's see what is the shortcut method. So, this is a class interval type of data. So, in class interval type of data, what do we do? We choose the midpoint. So, let's see how the table will look like. Yeah, such big table it is, but still. Eight, we have all of these numbers. Sorry, the table's alignment is misplaced. No worries. Uh, number of members they have already given. This is the given data. Now we have to find the midpoint. So total is 542. Now we have to find midpoint. 20 ka 30 ka midpoint, 25, 35, 45, 55, and so on. After this, we have to use shortcut method, which is a better way for ease of calculation. Right. What do we do? We find di, deviation, which is xi minus 55 upon 10. I hope you remember this, the formula. I'll write it here. What is this 55? This 55 is the midpoint of the midpoint. Matlab, ye pure ka middle value, which is 55. Uh, as you know, if we have two midpoints, then we can take any one of them. Right? This is the 55 and let me highlight it here. This 10. Okay, I'll have to choose another color. Just a second, guys. Yeah. This 10 is the class width. 
see all of this what is the width 30 minus 10 that is difference 30 minus 20 10 10 so this 10 is the class width right so first is minus 3 then it just increases in order so minus 3 ke baad apne aap without calculating you can write minus 2 then minus 1 then 0 then 1 then 2 and then 3 now whatever formula that we used in the previous question for xi we'll be using it for di so in previous formula we calculated xi square here we'll calculate di square just replace di in place of xi correct so here now we'll calculate di square then we'll calculate di square into fi so let's calculate di square see now the calculations become very simpler because if we try to calculate fi xi square see this square con karega 625 how will you do this correct it is better to square them rather than this so uh two before one zero one four and nine now fi di same thing we did with xi fi xi so fi into di so three. fi into di minus three three is a minus nine minus 122 all of them now we added summation fi di now we have to calculate fi di square and add it what will be the mean now mean is summation fi xi upon summation fi but here we'll get the mean as summation fi di upon summation fi that means see now let's see we actually want to calculate for x side because that data we have been given this di we introduced it so we introduced something in the question then we cannot give our answer in terms of that for example let me give a very simple example you understand uh let's say i want to find an equation of a straight line right they have given me the slope three but they have not given me the point so i have to assume a point and write my equation in slope point form suppose let's say i assume the point as x1 comma y1 the moment i assume that point x1 comma y1 in the back of our mind i should remember that my final answer should not contain x1 and y1 because that quantity we have assumed for simplification of our calculation it is not given in the question so we cannot give our answer in terms of x1 y1 similarly here di we have introduced it ourselves we cannot give our answer in terms of di right we have to give our answer in terms of xi that we have the following c assume mean c is the class interval ka difference class width you can say and we got 542 so summation FIDI, we got minus 17, summation FIDI square 765. Now, D bar. See, still we are calculating D bar. We want X bar. D bar is this, so minus 17 upon, so this is this. Similarly, we'll calculate variance. Mean of the given data now. Now we are converting it into X by this formula we calculated d but we didn't want d we wanted x so we have to use this formula x bar is equals to assume mean plus class width into d bar so assume mean was 55 class width was 10 and d bar we calculated for what we got x bar as this is our required mean this is our required mean 
I hope it is clear. Am I making sense? Are you understanding? Give me a thumbs up, guys. If you are understanding. Okay. Superb. Thank you, Mido. And thank you, Ganesh. I hope you are now paying attention. Chalo. So similarly, we have to calculate variance. So same thing will calculate variance for D. And then so by some formula, we convert it. Now, by some formula means you have to remember this formula, the box. Okay. So variance. This is the formula for variance. Uh, let me mark it here. Just a second. Yeah. This part is the variance for D. You can write it, subscript my X. And this part is the variance for D. Now, if we multiply the variance of D with C square, that means 10 square, then we'll get the variance of X. Then we'll get the variance of X. Correct? So the variance of D ka formula remains the same. Summation FIDI minus D bar ka square, the same as it was for X. So let's calculate it. 100, as we all know, C square, 0 0.01 square. Okay. Then what do we got? I hope your calculations is very nice. This is the variance, 141.04. Now, the standard deviation is root of variance. So 144 is the square root square of 12. So it will be around 11.9 or something, 11.8, right? Yes, it is around 11.98 or 9k beach. I hope I am clear. Right, guys? Okay. So we have three to three minutes extra. So we'll see something else. By the way, we the chapter is over. We just need to uh, do one question on coefficient of variation. CV. Now, obviously, guys, uh, don't take tension. Ki hum logo itne calculative questions aayenge in JE mains. The questions in JE mains should be like this. The one that you can see on the screen. Obviously, guys, no one will ask you to make a table to calculate all these things and to find variance and standard deviation and all that. And even if someone asks, we'll leave the question, obviously. <laughs> No need to waste 15 to 20 minutes while calculating all that. Right? So the questions in JMS will look like this. No need to form any table and all, just purely based on concepts. Correct. This was the thing which we did was for theory part in the 11th standard exam, which will happen in now just a month. So yeah. Now let's read the question. The question says, the mean of phi observations. That means total number of observations is phi. This is the value of n. Is 4.4. What is 4.4? It is x bar. Variance. This is sigma squared. The three observations. Suppose let's this is x1, this is x2, this is x3. Find the remaining two. So let the remaining two observations be x4 and x5. Sorry, I'm not writing here. Or else it will spoil it. Achha, we'll calculate it. No worries. Then we'll see the. So let the observations, the remaining observation be. We'll calculate it. X4 and x5. So we have to find these two, correct? Very simple. X bar is summation xi upon 5. What is summation xi? x1 plus x2 plus x3. So 9 plus x4 plus x5 upon 5. And the mean is given as 4.4. So we got a linear equation x4 plus x5 is equals to 22 minus 9, 13. Similarly, when we use the variance ka formula, sigma square, 
we'll get one more equation we have to solve them simultaneously now let's look at the question such simple questions come guys uh, you will see on the sunday's lecture where we do the pyqs right this is one of them so let's see let the other two observations be x and y which we have taken as x3 and x4 so mean mean we all got okay we all got this equation right x plus y equal to 30 same equation we got here now let's calculate standard deviation sorry variance variance of formula is see this is ungrouped data ungrouped data means no fi or if you want to get fi you have to put it one you can see here fi ki jaga pe kya hai one so xi x square minus x bar ka square so this equation we got the mean is 4.4 so if we simplify this equation, we'll get something like this. Yeah, we'll get x square plus y square equal to 97. What the first equation we got? x plus y equals to 30. Simultaneously solve them. So let's eliminate y from 1 and 2. I can write y as 30 minus x and solve this quadratic sorry what are the factors 36 hello for a foot write it in the chat box what are the factors come on guys quadratic equation hai. what are the factors factorize it 94 Achha, 9 and 4 Thank you, Ganesh. Superb. 9 and 4. So, x minus and x minus. So, x equal to 4 or 9. Correspondingly, y will be equal to 9 or 4. That means we got only one pair. The numbers are 4 and 9. So, what are the five numbers? The three numbers that they have given. 1, 2, 9 and 4 and 9. Right? So, that's all from my side, guys. Uh... The time is already up. So, yeah, guys, thank you for attending the lecture. There is some small part remaining uh, that we'll cover in the next lecture. No point in starting now. I think half of the next lecture we'll be doing this and then we'll be starting with revision. Okay, guys. So, thank you all, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Mido. You have been superb. Uh, I have seen you first time here. Right. So, yeah, thank you all. Bye bye, everyone. Take care. Yeah, thank you, Ganesh. Thank you.